Hello and welcome to So Much More, a women's health and well-being program produced with the assistance of the Community Broadcasting Foundation. I have the pleasure today to have on the phone all the way from Tasmania, Sonia Singh, and she is the artist behind the Tree Change Dolls, which is upcycling. It is taking fashion dolls that are no longer wanted, cleaning up their faces, repainting them and restyling them and turning them from rather adult looking dolls into gorgeous little children that are off on adventures. So here we have Sonia Singh. So thank you very much Sonia for being willing to be on my program. I'm really excited to have you on. So what are the Tree Change Dolls? Well, the Tree Change Dolls is an idea that I came up with after I lost my job and I had a little bit of time. I wanted to do something creative. And the idea I came up with was to upcycle or recycle these old fashion dolls that I would find at the tip shop and at charity shops where they'd been discarded. Nobody wanted them. And I started giving them a whole new look, so a more natural look. And my mum made little knitted clothes for them. And yeah, I thought the name Tree Change Dolls was really appropriate because I was wiping their face off, including the makeup. And instead of being fashion dolls, they were now little children ready to go on adventures. They are so sweet. I, I really enjoy looking at the pictures of them in Facebook. I just think they are so beautiful. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I love that because I've got quite a Facebook following now. And I love that a lot of people follow me even if they don't have children of their own, even if they're not really into dolls, they say the same thing. They just love the pictures coming up in their news feed. And I think that's really lovely. Yeah. So I'm just going to skip some of these questions because you've already answered them in that. Um, What actually happened when you first put the pictures of your dolls online? Oh, it was pretty crazy. I wasn't really prepared. You hear about people going viral and that kind of thing or, you know, or just a photo going viral or whatever. So as soon as I put a couple of photos of the sort of the before and after transformations of my dolls and a few pictures of them just playing outside in my garden like children, those pictures just went around the world in, yeah, like within 24 hours I was getting media requests mostly from like online news publications yeah from around the world and it was quite overwhelming (laughs) getting all the emails and dealing with that and at the time I thought it would probably die down you know maybe in a few days maybe in a week it went on maybe in a month and it just kept building so it was really quite incredible that is so cool. I'm just, I'm sitting here grinning. I don't know if you can hear it in my voice, but I just, <laughs> I, I think your story is so fantastic. I'm just like, yeah, this is so cool. How, what effect has the dolls had just around you, like your family, your friends locally, as well as the wider community? Um, well, I guess in a way it hasn't really changed my life that much because at the time, I'd um, I'd lost my part-time job, so I was actually looking for work. What it did mean is that now I make and sell my dolls in my online Etsy shop, and that has become my job. So (laughs) it meant I could stop looking for jobs, I suppose, and um, I'd sort of created a job for myself. Uh, So that was really nice, and my life hasn't really changed that much, but I do sort of get recognised in the street, and so that's a little bit different, but it's nothing that really interferes with my life or anything, but yeah, it is quite interesting. Last year when I went on a trip to Queensland and I got recognised several times there as well, so it's one thing to just be recognised, you know, in the town where you live, but it's another thing to be able to travel that I went cool. to New York as well because I won a prize through Etsy, a design award for my Etsy shop. And that was really interesting meeting some of my followers or fans, I guess you could say, from the other side of the world. That is really, really exciting. That is so cool. How many dolls have you made? Uh, I've made about 500 dolls, I think, that I've sold in my Etsy shop and that's over it's getting towards two years now so I I make maybe about usually about 20 dolls each month they take a lot of time and work um, and they're all individually hand restyled my mum makes all of the little clothes so yeah I'm never going to be able to make a whole lot so about 20 a month 
but yeah, so it's added, it's adding up. <laughs> so about 500 in total, and they're all unique. Like I don't just, you know, try and do it like a factory where I'm making them all look the same. So each one is like a unique little person. So with them being unique, are they designed straight out of your brain or are any of them ever based on any people that you know? Uh, Not usually, although after I've painted them, sometimes they end up sort of looking like someone, I guess. (laughs) Um, I've done a few where I've deliberately tried to make them look like people. Um, Actually, the very first ones that I did, I guess I was trying to make them look like myself and my sisters when we were children because I was sort of remembering the kind of dolls we liked to play with and the kind of childhood we had when we grew up. But I've done a few for presents for friends and things like that and I've made them look like specific people using, you know, a photo reference. And I get a lot of requests that this is something people really want. They want a personalised doll that looks like their child or their child sometimes wants a doll that looks like their mum and things like that. But I actually don't do custom orders. But what I do instead is I encourage other people to give it a go because I think it's really, really sweet if, if you know, parents or, or friends of the child can actually do that themselves and make that special gift to someone as well. So as well as selling my dolls, I sell a little online downloadable booklet that shows you the process I go through to restyle the dolls so that other people can give it a go. I think I'm going to have to actually get a copy of that book myself because I do want to do this as well. I think it's fantastic. What do your family think about all the doll business? Um, Well, (laughs) they probably got a bit sick of hearing about it for a while. When it was um, kind of really viral and taking over my life. (laughs) But no, my mum, like I said, makes the clothes. So she offered to do that right from the start because I was having a great time painting the faces. But I, I, yeah, I was having a bit of trouble with the clothes. It wasn't really my thing. Um, And she offered because she's a wonderful knitter. (laughs) She's always knitting and she's got her yeah sewing station in her house all all set up and ready to go so yeah and she's still doing that so my mum's really involved my twin sister she would like to be more involved actually and when I originally came up with the idea my idea was to think of something that we could do together my sister and I but as it turned out she was really busy at the time So I came up with an idea, (laughs) but then I just sort of ran with it myself. But she does make some of the clothes sometimes as well. Um, And the rest of my family, well, my partner was really a great help, John, when it went viral because he just found it so exciting. (laughs) And he really helped me a lot with answering all the emails and dealing with the social media and all of the attention. (laughs) So that was really, really helpful in the beginning as well. Yeah. What about your little girl? Oh, my little girl. Well, (laughs) she was only one and a half when I started, um, and she's now nearly four, and she loves dolls, and she's got quite a collection (laughs) of um, dolls herself. Some of them, unfortunately, actually, they're kind of the dad ones. (laughs) Like sometimes I will paint a doll's face, and it's only once I've painted the doll that I realise that it's, you know, like maybe its hands are chewed or it's damaged in some way. (laughs) And so she gets the reject dolls. (laughs) She doesn't mind. She loves them anyway. Yeah, she loves them all. And she loves helping me with the dolls as well now. It's a little bit tricky, or it has been, she's getting a bit older now, to work on the dolls when she's there because she does love it so much. So if I'm painting, you know, she will stick her head right in in the way because she wants to have a good look and, you know, bump the table. (laughs) I have to keep telling her to sit back down. But, yeah, she really loves the whole process. Um, And she is becoming a really good help as well and good company, helping me brush the doll's hair and wash them and help me decide which clothes go with which doll. So, yeah, she thinks it's great. I think she does think, though, that everyone's mum does dolls (laughs) because yeah that's all she knows so she doesn't realize that it is actually a bit of an unusual job to have (laughs) what a fantastic job to have though (laughs) it is yes
it's wonderful. Have you noticed anything about any children being given the option to play with these dolls versus the heavily made up dolls? I get lots of emails from parents who say they've shown me the pictures and their and their kids choose the after pictures. I'm sure there's a lot of children that, you know, there's probably a lot of children that like the dolls in their original style as well and and that's fine (laughs) um so yeah i haven't really conducted a scientific study or anything like that but definitely i do get a lot of emails from parents saying that their children saw the pictures and they really loved them and they say they look like friends of theirs they look like people they know and they they look like real friendly children they'd like to play with so that's the feedback that i get a lot of the time that's fantastic how about we take a quick break and we'll come back after this